Good morning. Good morning to the New York State Supreme Court justices who will be reviewing my case. I hope the evidence that's been submitted uh, shows that in fact the New York City Housing Authority is in the business of putting people out of their houses wrongfully by waging a war of the intellectuals against the poor, the weak, and the defenseless. Today is June 27, 2014, and I am no longer homeless. That is the captured flag of the New York Municipality Government of Mike Bloomberg because that's a blanket that I got from Sandy, the mega storm, when I had to be evacuated from the beach where I was living at. Because if I had stayed on the beach, I would have died. NYCHA responded to this, and this is the reply. I'm not a bad guy. There's no nightmare about me. I love the United States of America, but I'm going to have to go to Canada because I can't trust this country to keep me safe. After I paid, I paid with my service to this country and I did as a foreigner with a green card over ten thousand dollars was spent for me to keep mostly paper in a storage unit for four years at 250 bucks a month, which is 25% of my pension check. And when they heard disabled vet, they figured it was crazy vet because they, see, didn't, they did not see me as a doggone cripple in a wheelchair. Is how smart those intellectuals are. Well, on the 27th of June, 2014, I am no longer homeless. No longer homeless. That's thanks to an administrative process that I got because I was part of a crowd that had to be administered to because of a disaster. But no one seems to see the disaster of the Bloomberg administration that railroaded more than 100,000 people out of their homes, not giving them an administrative process because it was easier, faster. The, 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 the July 11, 2003 remaining family member revisions is nothing less than another Robert Moses kind of plan to to uh, to restructure the urban environment because New York City Housing Authority is closed. There's no more room. New York City Housing Authority will tell you, number one, that they're a federal agency and a New York court doesn't have the jurisdiction nor the power to tell them anything. That's why they're in the contempt of court on the two judgments by Justice Golia that deemed, that said that I should be deemed a remaining family member and I never got an administrative process. And that's the, that's the template to how you can reverse engineer the housing discrimination by asking NYCHA how many people that were, that were evicted 
received an administrative process. How many people that were evicted through a holdover proceeding who did not get an administrative process? Then they'll tell you, oh, well, they violated such a rule, or they broke the law. What they did is nothing less than housing discrimination. You see? See all these stacks of papers? Hmm? All these stacks of papers? I threw away at least 28 boxes, big boxes, full of these papers, these books of paper. Seven years of work, tens of thousands of dollars, more money than the apartment is worth. The apartment is worth about $40,000 because that's the buyout that I should have got as a remaining family member that's pre NYCHA acquisition because NYCHA gave, offered $15,000 to my aunt to give up the apartment. She refused it. She was supposed to give you $15,000 and then relocate you. She didn't take it. They didn't want to give me that apartment. Then they sent, then they had their tenant association presidents of Neva Harper and Hosea Mitchell, who now under this new administration of Bill de Blasio, trying to run for tenant associates president again so they can rob and steal everybody that they can't off in that Shelton house. This is me working, preparing for the oral arguments. And basically, the two matters before the court is the Queens County District Attorney's Office, the NYPD, Congressman Meeks, and uh, Senator Huntley, the elimination conspiracy against me. Then the other one is the one we are uh, replying to right now is the housing discrimination by NYCHA, which began, what made it legal was the corporate mayor of Bloomberg bringing a corporate policy into government, which is the July 11, 2002 remaining family member revisions in which he used a minority guy to, 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 to pull this off for him. That's my bedroom down there. This is the office where I've got to restructure my life, my economy before I move to Canada, which I believe is a much better country for my skin color. So what we're talking about now is that I'm no longer homeless, right? Why am I no longer homeless? Because I got an administrative process and HUD gave me a Section 8 voucher. <clears throat> they should have done that a whole lot earlier. So now, I go out on my little ghetto patio right here. This is the roof. Working on rebuilding. Working on rebuilding. It's going to be pretty spicy. It's going to be pretty spicy. Now, why would somebody want to torture? me. It all started was because I came to the aid of Mrs. Franny Green. Hosea Mitchell, who still lives in Shelton House, so does Neva Harper, are two black women that suffer from this disease, this cancer that was created by a guy called Willie Lynch who spoke in Virginia on the borders of the St. James River or something to that effect. And he created a template for how to make a slave and is still living in existence in the United States of America. And the Federal Agency of NYCHA is an expert at it. No one else, no one else has taken the Bloomberg administration's policies to task like I have. 
on the housing discrimination issue. So what does that say? That says they don't have the mental or the financial means of both in order to fight what's railroaded a whole bunch of Negro, herded them a whole bunch of Negro. And I'm not a lawyer, that's not what I do. I actually sell breath testers. That's what I should have been doing. That's what I should have been doing. That's what I should have been doing. My life was destroyed. So what did I do? I took homelessness, I wrapped it around their necks, and I dragged them all the way to your courthouses, honorable justices, in order for you to see what the truth is, what the facts are, and I want them punished severely. Excuse me. They've been blowing smoke in their papers to these courts since civil court. That's why Judge Maria Rezos is on the hook for judicial misconduct because she legislated from the bench when she had evidence that Cynthia Hill and her husband are not senior citizens that live there, not to committed perjury, that in fact, you can go back and see that they gave Judge Rachel's bogus papers to show that it was only Cynthia Hill in that apartment, when in fact, it's her and her husband and both their names are on the lease. It is not an exclusive senior center. You've seen what Ursula Moss said. You've seen the one hour documentary that I aired on TV numerous times that made Mayor Michael R. Bloomberg personally angry at me. He sent me his regards four years ago today to a guy called Marshal Edward Guider. We'd like to ask Marshal Edward Guider that. But he just died, just like Senator Huntley's son just up and dies. Now why would two people like that just up and die so conveniently for them? That's why I want to refer to the FBI to take a look at all this. And I've got paperwork in the exhibits to show that I'd already contacted the FBI. They don't, they don't care about all the abuse. The White House sent them something. They sent me a piece of paper. And I'd interest it because nobody thought this would ever get this far. It would ever get this big. And right now, I've got a television series that will be airing citywide on files and in two, uh, three, two counties weekly between June, between July and December 2014. It will run again in 2015 on my way to come and actually speak to you personally about what happened to me and to answer your questions in the oral arguments that schedule. These guys destroyed my life for helping out an old lady who was incapacitated, allegedly. But you can see in the video, her daughter was right there. She suffered from Alzheimer's and dementia, and Hosea Mitchell took the old lady to the bank. And it was rumored that, you know, she threw the, the, the bank person there a couple hundred dollars, and they allowed... Mrs. Fronnie Green to sign a piece of paper that made Hosea Mitchell co-account holder. That's legal, but if Mrs. Fronnie Green was incapacitated, she committed fraud. She committed fraud, Hosea Mitchell did. And that uh, uh, co-account holding situation isn't valid. It was based on fraud. And then after Ricardo Elias Morales, who was then the general counsel under, Ricardo, un, under Tino Hernandez, sent a letter to my boss, Gary Di Leonardo, and sent a letter to two addresses, where my office was, where all this stuff was at, 
and to the apartment. And after Donna Fury took everything from me, I took that stuff and I took it to the apartment. But the real problem is, is that on June 16, um, 2006, they left that old lady in her apartment with the gas stove on that she turned on herself. After I'd been crying, mortal danger, mortal danger, mortal danger. And then I sent that information to Stephen Wildchop, who was working as my guardian, but he was playing a double agent role, working for New York City Housing Authority and Human Resources and Adult Protective Services, who didn't want anybody to know about the elder abuse. Didn't want anybody to know that the old lady had $20,000 in the bank that Hosea Mitchell robbed. And then they left her in her apartment with the gas stove on for four hours. That's a Nazi copycat crime. If it was a white woman, they had been embezzled by some housing authority, Negro, and you left that old Jewish white woman in her apartment with the gas stove on for four hours, there would be hell to pay. But it's just some, you know, old Negro <laughs> who gives a crap. She isn't worth a she isn't worth a plug nickel. And that's what we've seen so far. I continued my activism. New York State found that I should be deemed a remaining family member, and I never got an administrative process through New York State Supreme Court Article uh, 78 petition, uh, index number 25547-2007. And NYCHA went to a lower court to a judge that was appointed by Mayor Bloomberg. Her name is Judge Maria Rezos. And during the time that I have after filing the, all the replies, I will be filing an, uh, a, uh, I believe it's CPLR 5015, which is to have them judgments voided. I need the judgment voided that had me adjudicated and capacitated because that temporarily, because that was done through fraud. My lawyer, Jamie Butchin, should be facing the uh, disciplinary committee of the Bar Association. Stephen Wontrop did the same stuff. He should face the disciplinary committee of the Bar Association because they knew I was never incapacitated. I'm a foreigner for crying out loud. How the heck do you expect me to be some kind of black African-American who think that it's okay to get herded, it's okay to get railroaded, it's okay to do that to me? They can't do that to me. But they did it. They did it. All those things that they did are crimes. These people committed felonies. I need the competent body of investigators to figure all that out. That's why I need a referral to the FBI, because you can't ask the attorney general to investigate their own clients because they're protecting them. And the attorney general even said it, wrote it in some papers, that the Queen's district attorney's got the uh, has the um, something as if they can decide whether to prosecute or not. That's why they couldn't prosecute Hosea Mitchell because she'd snitch about her having been a person who was helping identify people in order to target tenants for eviction to harvest apartments. Neva Harper does the same thing. And one of them's about to become Tenant Association president again under the new de Blasio administration. And that's a beautiful thing. I'm sorry. I regret the day I saved that old lady's life. She should have died. That all of this could have landed in the lap of someone else and my life would have continued. But really, really, does fate call upon one at the hour of their choosing, or that called me. This is my reply to Niger, and I can thank you very much. There's a whole lot more, but I think this is long enough for this video presentation and the reply to New York City Housing Authority. Bye-bye. Fourth anniversary, having been 
tortured for 10 years. How much is that worth? My life destroyed beyond repair. I want this over. I'm a French person. Quebec province is big enough for me. This is your Floyd Flake garage or charity case no more and he had it as a partner with Congressman Meeks and they owe millions of dollars. Bye. Hi there. Supplemental log. December 12, 2010. I'm about to call Washington DC to talk to Kim Ford to find out what happened to the bodies of evidence that I gave to the Congressman's office to Ida Smith that was taken by Kim Fuller to D.C. was never recorded. It's been getting contained. These are part of my allegation of obstruction of justice. Let's listen. Yes, Congressman Meeks' office? Yes, Madam Speaker, Kim, uh, Kim Fuller, please. Um, next shift, now. Okay. Do you mind calling her back in about 20 minutes? Yeah, what's your name? Ashley. Ashley, hi, Ashley. Um, my name is Philip Dreis. I, okay. she, she picked up two books from Ida Smith some time ago that was supposed to go to the White House. She, that nobody seems to know where they are to give it back to me because you didn't send it to the White House. I never got a letter saying that you got it, and it's got. We got a letter from. I got a letter from the Justice Department, and for six months your office has been stalling, trying. I don't know, stealing my stuff or not giving me my stuff, and nobody's talking, and everybody saying I'm crazy, all kinds of stuff. Ashley, I need some help okay. here. Okay. So tell, please tell, let me give you my number, ask him for to call me, call Ida Smith, because y'all got to fix this problem, or, I don't know, I guess, you know, the Justice Department is going to have to get involved and find out who has been taking evidence um, from the congressman's office, whether there was a burglary, something happened, and we have evidence that's missing, I need to get that back, so I can send it to the White House with the, uh, 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 Justice Department referral number and your office has had it for over a year you didn't do nothing with it and you ain't responsible this ain't you baby whoever your bosses are with Sophia King out because she's pregnant she's the one that tried to say I was some kind of threat to the congressman because I said I was in the special forces and I went to fight for your country and then she you know doing all kinds of stuff to try to make me look and sound crazy. Somebody even told me when I played Lauren Sterling, yeah, I'm calling, oh, you ain't big enough, blah. Oh, Jace, he's crazy. That can kill my life. Okay, please tell it's very important. Let me give you my number. Okay, okay Ashley? My number is 347-685-2860. I just need my stuff back, get it out of your hands and I leave you all alone. I don't want no problems. I ain't no threat to nobody. I, my life's been destroyed and somebody, and it's been other people. Y'all didn't do that. So that's what I'm saying. Just let me get my stuff and let me take it to the Justice Department, show them what New York City Housing Authority did. Y'all don't want to get involved. Um, you know, whatever. You know, y'all had evidence for years. Y'all, man, but y'all offices, people in your office have been saying bad, bad things about me and I'm not crazy. I'm a great guy. I don't get it. You get my point? Okay, thank you, Ashley. Uh, you got my number? Could you, you want, you want my number again? I thank you so very much. Please tell her it's urgent. I can't wait. Too long. This has been taking too long. Five years out of my life. Three and a half years with your office. And Ida Smith, they keep saying, I got a mama, but it, I came to your offices to, be, to give evidence. I didn't come to make friends, um, be, turn black because I'm, I'm from Haiti and I need to be African American. I don't need nothing but justice. You got evidence that suppose, that's criminal behavior, um, uh, diverting of funds, 
um, eliminating people that are remaining family members in public housing, all kinds of stuff, crimes like that. I'm a competent investigator. I really got a doctorate's degree, an associate's, a bachelor's, a master's, and I'm really related to three presidents of my country. I don't want to be no poor black ghetto Negro and I come to y'all sucking up to y'all like your gods. I mean, your okay. boss is daddy. Did you get my point? Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Ashley. Right. I appreciate yeah. you, baby. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. What? 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 I'm going to get out of Smith like that next. Watch me. Bye-bye. This is Washington, D.C. calling. Damn, I missed the call. Let me call him right back. Yeah. It should be Kim Fuller. Hello? Hello? I gotta call him back and get this on camera. I gotta get this on camera. You see this? This is a number that just called me. Okay? Watch this. Now, I'm going to call Washington, D.C. I'm going to call the congressman's office find out what's going on here. This is crazy. See? If I didn't have this, no one would be, would no one believe me. Okay? Meeks, D.C. Meeks, D.C. Contact, Meeks DC. Meeks DC. I'm low on battery power. I don't want this to die on me. Let's put it on speakerphone. Hi, yeah, is this Ashley? Yes. Yeah. Hi, Ashley. Somebody just called me from DC and I called back the number. And it said it was a non-working number. Okay, hold on a second. For Kim Fuller? Mr. Joyce? Yes, Ms. Fuller? Yes, it's Kim. Hi, From Kim. Two books are you How are you? I'm fine. The two bodies of evidence okay. that, that was supposed to go to the White House. I don't know where the other one was, but I took one book and I sent it to the Justice Department. But I never, I, I never got, I need a copy of that letter who you sent it to, and I need the other book. Uh, well, I don't know where it is, because I got one book, Mr. Dry. I understand. I'm not blaming you. But, Kim, okay. don't you see this looks really bad? Don't blame me, though, because you keep sending emails that are offensive, that, that talk about uh, the staff in a derogatory way, and that's not... Look, and, but and my dear, what, uh, your, your staff, listen... Your, it was your young lady, when I said I was going Sterling, said I was crazy. You're the one who's been talking bad about me behind my back. And I've got to find a way of expo... Of, she did say it to me. Yes, and she should not have said that. She should not have said that, okay, but then I'm telling you, you can't blame it all on me. I'm not, listen to me. Do you know my life? Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Okay, how come, yes ma'am, I apologize, I apologize, let me say this, 
why didn't I get a letter about what you're sent to the Justice Department or the FBI? Because nothing, all I sent, I sent the letter. I don't, I don't, I don't remember what date it was, or I would recreate the letter for you, Mr. Dryden. Okay. I sent the letter, and you told, didn't you tell my co-worker that you got a correspondence from the Justice Department this morning? Yes, but it, 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 because it was the referral for what I sent to the White House. Nobody contacted me that your office ever did anything. Well, did what? We sent, we sent the information that you sent to the Justice Department, sir. Well, that, those books were addressed to the White House, and I wanted them to go to the White House and specifically... Right! So, I am right! I like to know that it's boring being freaking right all the time, people. It's boring. But, that's my job, I love it. And, it's Lord Flint himself. Lord have mercy. Flake. How you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. No, I see. You remember me? Are you really a golf? Or, or you yes, just... I'm really a golf. No, okay. All right. You remember I'm me? I'm gonna learn. No, not right away. You never heard of me? I don't know. Philip Dreis? Dr. Philip Dreis? Yeah, what you doing? What you doing? I'm trying to destroy the Black Mafia in Southeast Place. What? What are you doing? Well, I'm homeless. They took a hundred thousand dollars stuff out of my home. Who my did? business. Through that incapacitated hearing, I took all of the evidence of Congressman Meek said to Huntley, you give me your email, I'll send you the evidence. Mm. Because everybody seemed to think you the head of the black mafia in Southeast Queens. They think who is? They think you the head man. <laughs> that you're supposed to be. Uh, who do you think put all them forces out here when Bloomberg came to see you? I did. Oh, I, I ambushed them. Oh, no. Right in front of your place. <laughs> That's my job. No, because the, the scoop came out of Leroy Comrie's office no. with Wayne Hubs getting his itinerary and giving it to Rashida. That sent me out here and ambushed Bloomberg. Now I'm out in the street as a homeless guy. So I've been retaliating. I'm, I'm the one that exposed oh. Shirley Huntley. Huh? I'm the guy that exposed Shirley Huntley. What? I'm not done. I told Malcolm a long time ago. Well, the rumor was since Malcolm got busted, you went in, you got sequestered at the, at like, like you're some kind of pope. <laughs> hey, they they me the Yo, look, let me tell you something. I will tell you the truth because that's my job. That's my job to be yeah. a journalist mm -hmm. and to actually get the news from because I will talk according to what my people, my sources tell me. Mm -hmm. But when I run into the man, I gotta ask the man. You gotta do it. Because then I gotta get back on my blog and tell people, look, I was wrong about Reverend Flake mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. everything they told me that I was blasting all over the internet. Mm -hmm. I got to suck it back, and this is the first time Dr. Dreis is going to have to suck something back. <laughs> what? I'm not as forgiving as you. It ain't my job to be a preacher and give absolution. <laughs> I'm a Catholic. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Reverend Flake. <laughs> Reverend no, Flake. Uh -huh. You know I'm the guy that did it, right? You did what? Get Shirley Huntley and get all these guys in trouble. It's my job. It's not. You haven't heard about you haven't heard about me? How much of a bad guy I was? Know you about, I don't know you were involved in it at all. I'm the guy, remember, when I had that business I wanted to start up up there that cleaned up the, the, the parking lot for you over okay. there. Okay. All right, I'm that guy. I'm the third guy that's a community contributor who doesn't ask for anything. And then the Bloomberg administration, I can prove to you. How big you think it is for Mayor Bloomberg to send a marshal with his personal regards at my eviction. What? If I can prove that to you by giving you the marshal's name and you call him and he did that, will you help me? And then if I show, give you the, um, the videotape of Shirley Huntley's son and what he said that I said to the Attorney General, what Ida Smith said that night just conducting a form of redlining, but this is federal redlining because the Congress is the bank, HUD is the bank, NYCHA, and yeah. that, that not one, in, one that. engine or TP, you're a congressman, you know that your appropriations bill that funds NYCHA is on, uh, it's on Indian reservation. That's right. Well then, yeah. no, they I think I'm some that. kind of freaking moron. Yeah, well, they, they, the ones they do that when you should do something different. When I did, when I changed, when I went and did the bill for the um, getting people out of public housing and trying to move them into housing. That's I what I'm talking about. Award. When was the federalization? It, was it wasn't. It wasn't what a um, 500 billion dollar, 500 million dollar deal. What you had to do was they earmark some of that money for them to buy the bonds in order to buy they themselves did. out of public housing. David Dinkins, your dumbass mayor at the time, 
did not understand what I was doing. So you know why I'm hunting Negro yeah. right now? I call myself I mean, a new without, black slave. With all due respect. What? For what? The what? what do you think I'm it doing? I'm a Haitian that was born free somewhere yeah. else. Yeah, I'm the last three president of my country and they yeah. tried to tell me I was crazy. Yeah, he, How do you think I know this and got this? He didn't know. He didn't know. My you, because shit, our public housing is not sustainable. It's not. It's not sustainable. I'm with you. I agree. And I'm not, I never have to be in public so housing. I inherited the you apartment a because... the Hope 6 legislation by Floyd Flake. Okay. And you'll see what happened. So Chicago got, you got a special bought number. into You it. got a special number for me I don't so that I can is. call no, you no, but and but talk to you. Because they damn bill never let yeah. me go. But, they but, will but, never but, let but me near you. Chicago tore down... Some yeah, I know. I saw that. I saw the demolition on the... Milwaukee tore them down. And so yes, people could have let home me, ownership. Let me tell you. Let and me that tell, was what the bill was about. You, let me tell you what three and a half years. But my fight, you have to understand one thing about me. What's that, sir? My biggest fight for the last 38 years has been against these nigger politicians who don't understand economics, don't understand how to build community. Charlie Rangel ain't put nothing up in Harlem. I just want to know. What, you know what about James Sanders? He's got a legislative council years. that's yeah. going to sit there and listen to every freaking lobbyist that walked up to his ass, hand him the freaking piece of paper, and and, and, and Sanders going to hand it in as, 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 as his freaking bill and try to take credit for it. Really? That got, I haven't what, known that. What, well, see, I don't got the when I tried I to get to the chief of staff, with. look, when they hear Dr. Dutch, everybody mm -hmm. gets scared for some mm -hmm. reason mm -hmm. because they know I'm out the bus step. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. guess what? I was walking by here hoping I could you and then guess what? Yeah. Everything's vindicated. <laughs> I was wrong about you. Well, man, you know I'm about this community. That's all. For Reverend Flake. That's why I left them. You right? know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna see. You know what they do? They want. They get elected. They think this is a lifetime job. Not one of my elected officials in this community has any concept of economics. I know. You know. So they put that, so the local preachers get pissed off because I build homes and build houses. Hey, well, everybody hates you. And all that. That. I mean, everybody hates But I'm saying, and I don't get upset about so what, it at what, all. What do you got to say about, they, about this whole thing about you be want, you wanted that casino, uh, uh, you know, they're calling it the gambling well, preacher. Here's the way I'm happened. a journalist. Here, yeah, let me tell you what, was, what, that, what happened on that. That whole casino piece, I did not invite myself in. Uh-oh. They invited me. Who's they? those the, the white the developers de oh in other words they trusted you the white folks said we got a somebody over here that can represent his people in his community and because of your influence here because they wasn't going to diss you that's correct that's so correct. it ain't it ain't so about you me, some gambling you wanted some casino the for the to fund it, the church as a non-profit no it wasn't coming to the church at all you know what i was supposed to do they got Peter all Spokesman. that no they got all that vacant land uh -huh. They came to me and said, Reverend, you have built more homes in this community than anybody. What we want to do is take some of the vacant land and build houses on it. So what we want to do... They came to you as a developer? They came to me as a partner to come in and help build a home. How come this ain't in the newspapers, my well, friend? there ain't no boy, nobody gonna write that. Why? The because same way they're not going to write because that Mayor of Bloomberg is eliminated. Yeah, you're a congressman, you should know that. Objective. Now, what if um, during the Clinton administration, Andrew Cuomo ceded his position to be governor through the Clinton elimination of welfare by realizing that housing would, would, would become full? New York City is the biggest one. It would mm. become full. Yeah, it wouldn't be sustainable. Mm -hmm. What if you put a poison plan, poison pill in the plan so that Mayor Bloomberg can come here, appoint some affirmative action chairman to put the shock and awe Negro and the mulatto uh, establishment that's the next tier up, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. then, then the bottom layer, and then he influences the federal policy of writers to raise the bar to retention to a whole bunch of disqualifiers that keep you from getting the administrative process. That that's, that's a freaking that's, crime. That's what happened. That's what, what do you mean? I say, I know, I've witnessed it. That's and, what Bloomberg doing now and everybody trying yeah. to play me for crazy. But it ain't just Bloomberg. But no, it's that Undersecretary Donovan yeah. took his plan and seated it all over the freaking yeah, nation. Yeah, yeah, he did do that. I know he that. But well, everybody think I'm freaking crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, the other part of that is, 
even though we can blame them for all of that, you got to blame these niggas. Pop Why you think I'm saying? I got the worst black. reality TV show. I said, put them niggas back in the slavery tell me by taking away a economy. Tell me one thing that's been built not any of these Nigga, other problems. Go on Jamaica Avenue. Niggas own yeah. shit. Not going on nothing. Yeah, ain't got nothing. Ain't got nothing. Call out gets it all. Man, I was just pray to God, boy. Yeah. Call out people, gets it people all. People should know he's from that Alabama. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't the, the freaking black N-word trader to your conquered race and stasis that was concerned about you. Well, it doesn't matter to me. All I know is the state says that Flake has put $600 million worth of development in his community. So that's why so they ain't messing with you because you pay your taxes? So what does it, no, it ain't my taxes. I do it, I do it under my nonprofits, huh? church related. Okay. Because you know it was so in the building, paper about that garage and your partner was Congressman Mix and it said you owed millions. We didn't, I ain't say I ain't owed millions because they. I ain't never been put in the press. So somebody should correct money. that. I don't owe money to nobody. Nobody. So you no. don't misuse nonprofits no. to milk and all that because no. that's what these guys getting fussed at doing. Yeah. But they set up church center up they, to show I me the business card. to build my community. And um, buy this land when it's vacant yes, because sir. I think vacant land gives the community a sense that it's not together. It's okay. Not going. I'm about to get me a hood bash voucher. Yeah. So yeah. how about a studio? You got studios in your place? Oh, I, I can see. say I know I'm the man. Full. All my buildings are full. All right. No problem. I got other resources. They, they full. My, my, my thing, because you provide the proper services yeah. and give them a, a yeah. standard of living, yeah. that doesn't have them crawling yeah. back to the ghetto yeah. where they came from. Yeah. So yeah. you're building people. Yeah, look, well, you need to say that then. That I you're you building communities. Yeah. Why are they smart enough to understand that? Huh? Why are they smart enough to understand building oh. communities mean you're actually uplifting the people yeah. by making sure that when they get into your place, you don't let them crawl back to the whole nigga dumb bullshit. But well, ain't but one of them that's elected know how to do that. Who's that? And that's Malcolm. But well, he, he got he, too he, ambitious. What do you mean too ambitious? I'm, got the, too ambitious. I'm the one that set him up. Yeah, you got no. too ambitious. But you, you, want you, me got him, you, could, you set him up maybe, but you could do it because his own darn I sat with him. I got oh, mad. Yeah. I got mad when they made him yeah. head of the economic development. I said, that yeah. boy be selling houses. He don't own, gave a house to the Haitians and doing all this stuff purely political because he betrayed me because he, he, he wouldn't help me. Yeah. That, um, that guy, Ken, told me I didn't know racism and I didn't know anything. I got a freaking law degree, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I don't yeah. care how I'm talking. I ain't God. Yeah. And, and my sense, international law, because I wanted to go sue my country for the stuff where they took from us. Right. Let's <laughs> go to my office. Over here. I, I love you, brother. Thanks. All right. So Good if you hear, you though. if you hear Dr. Dreis again, Dr. Dreis, Philip Dreis, Philip Dreis. Yes. Okay. And you just put your stuff online. Is that what you do? Yes, sir. I see. Okay. All right, brother. Thank you. Bye, bye. It's a beautiful day in America. Bye, bye. He knows we put it online. Bye, bye. <laughs> Is that you, baby? How you doing? <laughs> I'm here today to speak on a number of issues, considering I woke up this morning and I have been invited to lecture at a community college in New York City. And I believe the professor of the course is the editor and publisher of an investigative newspaper, an online newspaper, the Black Star News. Now, we want to start from the most recent to the oldest. After I introduce myself. My name is Philip Edward Dreis. I'm this guy. I'm the guy that's former Special Forces, United States Army, 1st Battalion, 75th Infantry, who went in there with a military occupational skill as a cook. Broke that contract. Volunteer for the Special Forces. Been there, did that. 
This is a picture of me, 2,000 feet up in the air, jumping out of an airplane, military ops. And at the end of all of that, you end up getting one of these. It's not a general discharge, it's nothing but an honorable discharge. They couldn't believe that. I'm just a little Haitian. Staffers in his political office have no respect for veterans. Unless you work there, like Lester Muse does for Shirley Huntley, gets paraded around the floor of the New York State Senate as a little puppet. You betrayed us, veteran Sarge. You betrayed us, veterans. You got that high, and you ain't thinking about us. Now, let's get to the body of this story. Bill Thompson. Mr. Castell. And what's her name? Yvonne something. Jackson. Miss Jackson. And Mr. Castell. E, I think it was for Edward Castell. What did you know? When did you know it? And what did you do about it? When you knew I was putting about 5,000 of these posters up all over the telephone poles in Queens County. All over the projects from Queensbridge down to the Long Island Railroad in Jamaica. Ida M. Smith contacted you. Check the phone log from the congressman's office. Okay? Yvonne, you spoke to Ida Smith. That was my handler. That's who I reported to inside the congressman's office about my activities for the Thompson campaign. Monica Pringle, I came and brought you the evidence of the check of me not only doing this for free, but also canvassing for money. Okay? All of you politicians knew about it. Ida Smith, you was working in the Democratic Club on Linden Boulevard, and I told you I was going to put posters out there. You said, Ida Smith, don't worry about this area. We, are, we got them already. Or we already got them. something to that effect. You all knew I was doing this. You encouraged me to do it, and you made me promises that my housing issues with New York City Housing Authority would be eliminated if I got this done. Ida Smith, you even told me to my face. Well, if you do that and you accomplish what you say you, you can, that'll go a long way to proving you're not crazy. Bang! Congressman Meeks. Congressman Meeks. Oh, I'm sorry. Byron Simon, Chief of Staff of New York State. State, United States Representative to the Senate. Now you're working for Senator Hildebrand. What did you know about this one, brother? What did you know about this? You were working for Congressman Meeks when the federal whistleblower brought this to your office. What did you know? When did you know it? What did you do about it? You sitting with U.S. Senator Hildebrand, Byron Simon. What did you know? Oh, Robert Simmons, what do you know? You're the Chief of Staff, Deputy Chief of Staff of Congress and Meeks in the Jamaica Field Office, what do you know? Kim Fuller, Sophia King, Chief of Staff of Congress and Meeks in Washington, D.C., what did you know? When did you know it? What did you do about it? The housing whistleblower, Byron Simon. Chief of Staff of Senator Hildebrand. What did you know? When did you know it? What did you do about it? About the housing whistleblower and the redlining scheme of the Bloomberg administration. We're talking about civil rights violations, Title VI violations. When you discriminate against the Haitian, you hate it, discriminate against the black guy in public housing, and you're diverting federal funds from the remaining family member issue, Congressman Meeks. That's what we're talking about. I wrote a letter to the President. The Justice Department sent me a letter. I've been trying to get all of these politicians' offices 
that received evidence against New York City Housing Authority to weigh in on this. They refused. That's why I'm going to take them to court. They're violating the Separation of Powers Act. They're in cahoots with the Bloomberg administration to cover it up. So Thompson can go in there and say, oh, he's going to fix public housing. No, public housing is closed unless you have a revolving door policy or unless you st or if you don't stop this way of railroading people out of there without an, adm an administrative process. Governor Cuomo, when you were Attorney General, what did you know? When did you know it? What did you do about the information that I gave you exposing the Bloomberg redlining scheme, Governor? How many of you people in those political offices received this by the New York Page, the first uh, paper that wrote something about New York City Housing Authority retaliates against disabled veterans for exposing elder abuses. What did you do about Mrs. Fawny Green being embezzled out of $20,858 and left in her apartment for over four hours and not your employees had knowledge that she was in her apartment with the gas stove on and refused to call for rescue until I pushed them to call for rescue. Saved the life. I've been punished for that. I'm not letting that stand. This is the original article by the Black Star News, written by Donald Winkfield, the same guy that got Kerry busted and in jail. He's the one that wrote this story. Housing whistleblower retaliated against, and Tom Crater republished it in this paper. And guess what? The Office of Congressman Gregory W. Meeks, it is alleged by me, the former, the former distribution manager for the New York page, you'll see it in the video, called Treason. Congressman Meeks' office paid Tom Crater to reprint another story and take all of these off the shelves. That's the reason why I had so many to give to so many people and spread them out all over town, thousands of these papers taken off the shelves. Why? Because it says right here that they called Congress, he called Congressman Meeks' office and they refused to respond. That's why he made him take it off. And I believe Ivan Smith was the handler that did that. Here is a letter of numerous letters. This is the third letter from the Veterans Administration. Let me read it to you. To whom it may concern. And this is to all of the politicians. I got five of them. To whom it may concern. Mr. Philip Jackson, a veteran and foreign patient at NYHHCS Brooklyn VA. Mr. Jackson will be referred here at Brooklyn VA March 5th, 2008 at the recommendation of Ms. Ida M. Mida Smith, Special Assistant Counsel Gregory W. Meeks. Mr. Josh received treatment as appropriate to his needs and was recommended to continue his treatment as an outpatient. He refer received both psychiatric consultation and therapy to assist him in maintaining his mental health stability due to stresses associated with his housing situation with NYCHA. Mr. Dreis has full cognitive function and appears to be capable of managing his affairs and self-care. It is recommended to Congressman Greg, 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 Gregory W. Meeks that Mr. Dreis's case of alleged housing discrimination be referred to state and federal law enforcement two years ago. This recommendation to the Congressman and his elected representative is still in effect, signed by a doctor and a therapist with a master's degree. This is not a joke. I need for you guys to respond. You refuse to, I'm going to take you to court. The red flag is up. It's war. It is freaking war. You bunch of people, and I use that term loosely, you creatures, that is. You helped destroy my life. You slandered my name. And right now, next video, I'm going to be talking to Mrs. Constance Robotham, who's the secretary of the chairman of housing, because I can't go to Shelton House, to Miss Lottie's house, to pick up stuff that I left there eight months ago because I'm on some kind of a, a list that has a Haitian embedded domestic terrorist. I don't have any bombs. 
I don't have anything. What's going on here? I am a patriot. You served this country proudly. And what you guys have done was help destroy my life for political gain. For you to railroad black people and Puerto Ricans out of public housing. And you're covering it up. And I'm catching y'all every which way but loose. Y'all going to have a nice day. Because I'm that guy that says, I ain't letting you go that easily. I ain't letting you go that easily. I'm going to take you politicians to court, and after that, it's on to Federal District Court with HUD, the United States Census, and the U.S. Department of Human Resources for saddling people with guardians because these judges like Judge Maria Rezos in civil court in Queens County, all that you have to do is slip, give her a piece of paper that says, I don't think he can uh, um, uh, defend his case or prosecute his case. So they saddle you with a guardian, that's a relocation apparatus, and that's against the law, because if I'm incapacitated, I'm supposed to have a psychiatric evaluation, a good one, and go to a uh, uh, Supreme Court for an Article 81 incapacitated hearing for the Justice Thomas in New York State Supreme Court in Queens County. That's what it is. What you guys have done is you're railroad Negroes. It's Black History Month, and you black politicians are a bunch of freaking black traitors to your doggone race. You're a freaking abomination. You're a bunch of puppet posts. You're a bunch of puppets. And I want to see where the strings lead. Because that's the guy I want. Y'all go ahead and have your nice day. I ain't playing with you. We're not friends. We're not friends. And I am not a terrorist. I'm a patriot. And I, 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 I swore an oath to protect the Constitution of the United States of America from all enemies, foreign and domestic. No one's relieved me of that oath yet. You have your nice day. Bye bye. Merry Christmas. It's Christmas Day. And if you've been good, you get a real big reward. But if you haven't been, guess what you get? And it looks like this. Bang! Hi Tim, how you doing? Merry Christmas to you. Hey, Merry Christmas to you, man. What's up, man? Yeah, uh, nothing, man. Big ass gift on elected officials. What? Hell yeah, man. On well, elected officials gave me a big ass gift. I think the PlayStation 4. Wow, take yeah. a look at that. Shit, All gifts wrapped and everything. Shit, heavy. Elected yeah, officials gave me. I never had a PlayStation. No. I'm sorry, I gotta take it from you, bro. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I gotta turn it back in. I gotta get a refund, cause they need money to go to court. That's all, that's it, stop your crying. That kid from Black Electro Fish don't make it that special. That's it, they're done, you hear me? They're absolutely done. That's it. You had enough? What are the other kids would get from elected officials? I'm taking them all back and getting them a refund. That's it, it's done. Bye-bye. Hey everybody, I told you, I'm the new Scrooge. Bye-bye. <laughs> you can see this is the gift wrap. This is Christmas Day. We're over here by Godbrook Boulevard. There it is. I ripped up another gift from these kids that are getting gifts from black elected officials. I take the gift wrapping off, and I take it in. I trade it in.